Good evening and thank you for coming. Today is the first day of our investigation. We arrived in town about 6.30 this morning and began with our organizational meeting at 8.30 this morning. The purpose of the organizational meeting was to designate who would be parties to this investigation. And the parties are the Federal Aviation Administration, Scaled Composites, and Virgin Galactic. Let me start by saying that the cooperation by these parties has been very good. It's worked very well so that we can collaboratively do what we're here to do, which is to find out what went wrong and to prevent it from happening again. Let me also, again, extend our condolences for the loss of a loved one and for the injuries suffered by the surviving pilot. So the groups that we formed were vehicles to document the wreckage, systems, engine, vehicle performance, data, and operations. So let me briefly describe what each of the groups did. They began investigating today, so today was their first full day of investigation, starting with the vehicle group. The wreckage is located on a large area or oriented northeast to southwest about five miles from end to end and when the wreckage is dispersed like that that indicates the likelihood of in-flight breakup so the documentation of the wreckage is important in order to determine by finding where the pieces are in order to determine when and how the breakup occurred and helping with that documentation was the federal bureau of investigation from Los Angeles and from Sacramento. So thanks to the FBI for helping with that, with documenting that wreckage, again, to help us with the investigation. Our cooperation has been, has been excellent. Let me also, as I indicated earlier today, thank the Kern County Sheriff, Donnie Youngblood, for all that they have done as first responders to, first of all, be first responders by rescuing the, the downed but surviving pilot and hence from that point on for, by protecting the site and by ushering us to help us, help, ushering us around to help us do our investigation. The systems and data groups work together and they have extensive data to work from to help us investigate this accident. Because it was a test flight, it was heavily documented in ways that we don't usually see with normal accidents. We know of six cameras on the vehicle itself, six non-volatile sources of information on the vehicle itself, three cameras on the mothership, the White Knight, telemetry with over a thousand parameters that gives us extensive information. There was a range camera at Edwards Air Force Base that we'll be using that had visual contact with the aircraft. There was the chase aircraft that had video images and radar. So there were quite a few sources that we have that aren't normally available to us on accident investigations that we're going to be able to use to determine what caused this accident. In the operations arena, we conducted, we began conducting interviews. I'm not gonna go over what we have discerned on the interviews yet because we don't like to reveal what we have found on interviews for fear that it might affect what subsequent interviews bring forth. The engine group found the tanks of the engines, the fuel tanks and the, and the oxidizer tanks. And let me go back to the arrangement of the northeast to southwest arrangement of the, of the, of the uh, debris. On, on the far northeast was the left and right tail booms. Next to that, the next item along that line was the, was the fuselage along with the oxidizer tank and the fuel tank. Next was pieces of the cockpit. And then finally was the engine itself, the rocket engine itself. So the engine group has looked at the fuselage with the tanks, with the fuel and oxidizer tanks, and also methane tanks, has not yet looked at the engine itself. We have begun removing parts from the debris field, again, thanks to the FBI helping us document so that we can remove the parts, and that enables 
two things. One is reduce protection from the Kern County Sheriff Department, which is dedicating extensive resources to protecting all of these sites that are far removed from each other. And number two is it enables a return to normal in general, for example, but we know that a railroad has not been able to move through and we have cleared the debris from the track so that, so that that can happen again. So we will continue the investigation tomorrow and I will do another press conference tomorrow evening. And again, because this is the first day, I don't have a lot of information to tell, but that's what we have so far. Uh, and at this point, I'd be happy to take any questions that you might have. Have you interviewed the surviving pilot? The question is, have we interviewed the surviving pilot? We have not because the surviving pilot is not medically, it's, it's not, the doctors do not recommend that we do an interview at this stage. We are, so we are in contact with the surviving pilot's wife and we don't want to interview that pilot before the pilot is ready. You any any further questions? Can yes, you please. Describe the pattern. Did it go from northeast to southwest? Is that the pattern that the, the, the pa craft is flying? The question is, the, describe the pattern that the aircraft was flying in a southwesterly direction, and the debris pattern starts northeast. Again, with the left-right tail booms. The tail booms are the booms that extend behind the airplane, behind the wing that hold the horizontal stabilizer and, we, and they, we found them in disparate places. They weren't in the same place and then found the fuselage itself, the main fuselage and then the cockpit and then and the farthest southwest position was the engine, was the rocket engine. Yes, please. How far are the pieces from one another? How, how big is the area? How far are the pieces from one another is the question. The total distance from far northeast to far southwest is about five miles and that's that means between the disparate sites that complicate our task as investigators because we have to go to those sites plus the extensive amount of, of data, that's, that's why we have our work cut out for us because, and I'm not complaining, that's actually a good thing that we have that much data because it's going to help us, again, do what we're here to do, which is to find out what went wrong and figure out what to do, make recommendations to prevent it from happening again. Yes, please. The question is, have we been able to determine what broke the spaceship apart? No, we have not. As I say, when the field, the debris field spans that large an area, then we know there was an in-flight separation. If it had crashed together, then all the pieces would be close to each other. But that spread of the data of the debris field tells us that it was an in-flight separation. And of course, the question then is, why did that happen? So that's what we are exploring. That's what our investigators are examining. Yes, please. Are there any early the question is, are there any findings that we've made that could affect the short-term future of this program? We are here to investigate this accident. While we are investigating, there is nothing that stops this operator from continuing flying and doing what this operator wants to do. If we find anything in the course of this investigation that warrants immediate attention, we would rather than waiting for the completion of our report, we would put out immediate recommendations as we have frequently done. So, so in terms of the short-term future, that would be completely up to the operator, would not be affected by what we do. We intend to find out what caused this accident and make recommendations to prevent it from happening again. Do you have any idea when, yes, please. Um, how long an investigation like this might last versus the administrative the, the question is, do we have any idea how long this investigation might last? The on-scene part, I would estimate probably four to seven days and then we go off scene and, and continue the factual collection off scene in, in various places where we need to go to collect that evidence. And then the factual portion of the, of, the, of the investigation stops and the analysis begins. We do the analysis by ourselves. The total time, total time elapsed in that process will be probably about 12 months or so. But again, as I say, this does not stop the operator from operating. And if we find something that's, that needs immediate attention, then we will put out immediate recommendations rather than awaiting the completion of the report to do that. Question yes, please. The cameras, Question about the onboard cameras. Have they all been recovered? I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that. I'm, I know that we have identified the presence of six. Whether they have been recovered or not, I'm afraid I do not know at this time. Yes, please. So I know one pilot was able to eject and the other wasn't. Do you know why he was not able to? The question is one pilot was able to eject and the other wasn't. We are not sure that one was able to eject. We know that one was out of the airplane. We don't know how that pilot got out of the airplane. 
Uh, we know that there was a paragraph, uh, a parachute that was found that where that pilot was, we know that the other parachute was found undeployed. Why one was found out of the airplane and the other one was not, we do not yet know. Yes, please. I'm, the question is, how does the parachute system deploy? And I'm afraid I don't have, I don't know the answer to that at this point. Can you tell yes, us, please. Can you tell us how many fuel tanks you found and what the nature is? You mentioned methane, oxidizer, what, what else? How okay, many? the question is, how many fuel tanks did we find? There are two fuel tanks. One is uh, a fuel, that, the acronym for which I don't remember. The other one is nitrous oxide. And the, I, I mean, the other one is methane, and then the oxidizer is nitrous oxide. So there were three, three, three. tanks, yes. What was the two, okay, one more question. I'm going to say two, but one more question. What was that the role of the FBI yes. Today? Pardon? What was the role the FBI played? The FBI has been very helpful to us in documenting the scene so that we can, can know where all the parts were so that we will be free to remove the parts and, not, and, and, not, and, remo and return the community to normal. Thank you again for this press conference. Please look at our Twitter feed, at NTSB, or our website to see what time our press conference will be tomorrow. Thank you very much.